Go get your brushes, go get your paint And hey, this is how you do it, let's show she away I'm gonna teach you, be ready to learn Cause when I'm done, it's your turn Take your time, steady in You can do it right, show she can Enter my world, watch your clothes And when I'm through, oh, why not have a go? Take your time, steady in You can do it right, show she can Enter my world, watch your clothes And when I'm through, oh, why not have a go? A week, hey, miniatures Hey guys, it's Shoshi from Shoshi's Minis and we are live and it is Monday. That means today we're gonna be doing our, wait, let me do this a little bit. It's gonna be our auction for today because remember we, we, well, we're gonna reveal the results for the blind auction today. And I'm also gonna work on my future caster entry for Adepticon so you get to see me kind of do some finishing touches on that. Hello, McLeod. It is Shoshi time, yay. Our staff, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? So it's, it's Monday, it's the start of the week. We're gonna do this um, Wednesday. I'm hoping to do my Adepticon um, video for the ethnic skin tones. So be on the lookout for that. And then after that, um, I've got another video where I'm gonna try to do 
um, how to paint faces. So that will also be for Adepticon. And then don't forget also Whip Trip Fridays. And the 16th which is our giveaway. Let me just check when that's going to be because it's different every single time. So the 16th is next Monday. So next Monday we will start, we'll do our giveaway for subscribers only. And it will be something really cool. Maybe a model, we'll see. So yeah. Good evening, Dr. Pandateka. It was well, afternoon here. So good evening in Europe. Yes. All right, let's take a look at what we got today. And then toward the end of the stream, I'll reveal the winners of the Adepticon, or sorry, of the, the auction. So here we have my um, dragon. You guys remember a while, a long time ago, you guys challenged me to paint this guy um, on stream and you, you picked like reddish color and gold and it turned out really cool. I've got a lot to do though to work on him. So just finish him up because I've got some wings. I've got a new little base that fits just perfect. Let me see if I can flip this so you can see how it's going to look on the base. So it fits almost perfectly in the middle of that. Can't quite see everything together. Hey, Sneaky. Hello. How are you? I'm getting really excited to go to Model World Expo and meet you. And uh, I just bought my tickets today to um, two workshops that I'm going to be um, taking at Model World Expo. One of them is from Michal Zarsky. He's uh, the Land Studios and him taking his non-metallic metals class. And the other class is by, by Penny. I can't remember her last name, but her name is Penny. Oh, there's the wings. And she's teaching a, um, a class about how to underpaint for a flat, which I would love to, I just, I love flats. I don't ever get the chance to paint them except for the one from my, for my grandparents. And, that's it. So this is, so we have a lot. I have to finish all of this little pieces of that chipped off. I'm going to have to kind of sculpt into there. Aw, Dr. Pandateka, thank you for the sub right off the bat. That's so awesome. Let's give some hype to Dr. Panda, Pandateka. Are you going to be at Model World Expo, Pandateka? Pandateka. There we go. Yoo-hoo! Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> good, good. All right, so we got, we got that started. There's so much to do. What should I work on? I think for now, I'm gonna work on the body and we'll work our way up to the wings because I think I have to do some airbrushing yet on the wings. I can also look to see if I have any chips. See, I've got a few more chips I've gotta fix. And you know what, let's fix those chips now. And that way, don't need to worry about it. There's a little one right there. Everything else looks pretty good, pretty good. I love what we did with these wings, but we need to go in and, and even go even darker. So I've got my little Druchy Violet. I got my friend's parents from Crow Krill. Looking on the, you finally pulled the trigger? Yay, awesome. So I know that tickets go on sale. Oh, you finally pulled the trigger. Oh, this is your first subscription. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate that. It's really big help. By the way, I have St. Patrick's Day nails and little shamrocks. St. Patrick's Day is a really big holiday here in the US for um, um, Irish Americans which I am descended from Irish Americans. I don't claim to be Irish too much because um, I'm such a watered down American mutt that it's like claiming to, I mean, I'm about as Irish as I am German, which is not a lot either, you know? <laughs> and let's see, I need some more gold from this side. This is the rich gold. I think I used a bunch of that in this. Give it a good shake. Some of that on the palette. I used a little mix of metallics last time. So, 
Our staff, hello. Ah, oh, Domedes, you're bringing a raid. Awesome. You're bringing a raid? Who's the raid from? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. There we go. There's some gold. <gasps> Just Dices, thank you so much for the raid. Yay. In fact, when Just Dices will say something in chat, I will go ahead and follow. Melite, hello. Userwood, hello. Dices, yay. There he is. There's she. I'm not sure if it's a he or she. Hold on. Oh, she, awesome. Okay, am I following you yet? Let me see if I follow you already. Hello, Dices. Just Dices. <laughs> there we go. If I wasn't following you before, I am now. Yay! There. Yay, and I'll do the little bell too so I can find out when you're on next. Good. Hey, thank you for the road. We're gonna be painting, today we're painting this um, gold dragon. He's almost done, but I'm getting him ready for creature casters, um, what you call it. Um, creature casters, uh, beast, Brez and Beast for Adepticon. So we're just, we're getting rid of all the little chips and you know, yeah. Damn, so sexy, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for following Madam Gorgonzola, thank you. Awesome. Yes, mad love. Much hype. Hypes, hypes, hypes. I love these um, emotes from Madame Gorgonzola. It's so cute. Out of you. Aww. You're going to Adepticon too. Awesome. It is a, if you've not been, it's a really awesome con. Put some gold in there. See that already? It immediately fixes it, doesn't it? And then I'm going to add just a little bit of this orangey gold because real close to the edge of that. There. And I'm going to do this one too. Hi, Robosh. Um, by the way, guys, we're going to, we had a blind auction, if you don't remember, um, this weekend. And um, people were bidding. And the bidding is now over. I've ended the possible bids. And I figured out who is won the auction. So we'll be um, showing that off later and revealing it. Let me get some of this Peridot gold and some of this gold in here. Fix this. Ooh, I need some, I need some primer on that first. Hello. Did you know you can use primer just as a black paint and it works pretty good? I don't know if you guys knew that. So I'm just going to brush this. This is the Vallejo primer that I just happen to have in a little bottle so that I can just put it right on. I do. And then I need to look for any other little chips. It be chips. This thing has been, you know, in my studio for a while, which is always dangerous. Because things tend, like I might lost one of the wings. Yes, Madam Gorgonzola, I love it. <laughs> Gorgonzola, the, the the cheese. All right, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. This one's already done. I'm gonna add a little of the purple in there. Ooh, mm, not sure if I like that. I think I need to go back over that with some gold. There we go, that's better. Now that, that completely made a highlight where I didn't want one. I need something even darker. I'm gonna go with this bronzy color. Yes, I will have to meet Just Dices. So, Just Dices, if you come to Adepticon and you see me, do not be afraid to just stop me and say hi and meet me and stuff because I'm always running around Adepticon like a chicken with my head cut off. And I've actually had people say, oh, you looked busy. And you know what, I'm not an introvert in the slightest, so if you even just like wave at me, just do a little introvert wave if you happen to be an introvert, or just come up and say hey if you're not an introvert, and I will be happy, happy, happy to meet you. Yay, good. Okay. I'm glad to, glad to put that out there. And I'm getting paint all over myself. I don't want to mess up my new sticker nails. All right, there. this is a little bit more on the brown side. Ooh, 
I don't know why. I don't hate that at all. It's it blends in real nice. Okay. Add some more in some other spots. Love my nails. Yeah, these are these Color Street nails. They're just a sticker that you put over your nail and they are actual polish. So once they cure, which they have not, which is why this one on this side is starting to get a little janky on me. But once they cure, it's just as if you had polished your own nails. And I just love the little patterns and I love the glitter. Hello, Rumble, how are you? All right, I'm gonna set those wings aside a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna do this one more. Good, okay, set that aside, let's look. We had this primed and put some this dark stuff on top. One of the things I like about having a big model, ooh, that looks cool. The big models make it so nice to um, paint on stream because you don't have to worry as much about people being able to see stuff. That's already looking nice. We're good. And I don't, I really don't even think I need to do much else. I could put a little highlight on some of that. But the bronze did a good enough job, didn't it? Boop, boop. Okay. The chips are fixed already. Oh, I see another little chip, chip, chip. That was a little one. And I'm gonna take glasses off just to look close. This guy has been to Adepticon and back. A few more chips. So he's been, you know, lying around in my studio. He's had a chance to get paint knocked off of him. I think I've actually put some varnish on him, so he doesn't, uh, doesn't look that terrible. Okay, I do see some areas where I'm going to take some burgundy. Try not to use my nails as a tool. That way we preserve the polish. Ah, there we go. A little burgundy and a little red, because I want, because remember when we painted, you guys chose red to go in here and it just doesn't pop out enough. I think I never got to the Highlights of that part. Red, red. We use, yes, we'll use this pure red. And, aha. This is a handy tool. This is handier than my nails. You're gonna, you're gonna lurk, no problems. Have I seen, they have released Rumble, yes, we just talked about that. I just signed up for Michael Pizarski's, Pizarski? I know, Michelle Pizarski's, um, and I'm probably mispronouncing the Polish on that, um, non-metallic metal class, and then also, hold on, where's my phone? I never find things. The other class that I signed up, what, let me check real quick, I'll tell you what the other class, oh no, I have skip frames, that's not cool. So let me try. Let me look up real quick to see what the name of the other class was. It was Penny with the name of the first name of the artist. Here we go. Nope. Here we go. So, Michael Pizarski is uh, Saturday, and then Penny Meyer is teaching a workshop on flats. The, the next day. Oh my gosh, lots of hype. Hi, Lamunis. Yep, I, I was in the know. I So I, long time ago when, um, what you can do is you can go to Facebook and, oh, that's not the right color at all. Let's add a little black to that. That didn't do anything, did it? That just black to that. Hmm. Interesting. 
All right, we're gonna. So this is more of magenta, but we're gonna we're gonna try to bring bring out some of the like this over here and this over here, so I'm not getting paint on stuff. So I've mixed black and red together to get a darker burgundy, burgundy. I'm just gonna go in here. And, oh, interesting, hmm. What's happening? It gets more, it's not the right color. I need, well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna go with the straight red and see if what happens. Maybe? Ooh. I don't, I don't want, I don't know. Maybe that looks It definitely does something, doesn't it? It's it's changed it a little bit. Well, I like that. I like that quite a bit. It needed something, didn't it? Check. One of your classes was sort of canceled. The artist isn't going to make it, so they lined someone else up to cover it. For what, Lamunas? What, what class are you talking about? Did you sign up for Model World Expo? Or you're talking about Adepticon, aren't you? Yeah. We were talking about Model World Expo. There was a bunch of Italians that aren't coming to Adepticon anymore, and I... Yeah, but we're not gonna get into the why, because I don't wanna talk about the COVID blah, blah, blah on my stream. That's not, that never gives me calmness. We come here to chill. I already like that. That already looks cool. Like a boss. What do you guys think of that red? He's supposed to be an emperor dragon, so I kind of wanted a rich, a rich red. Ah, Adepticon, yeah, Francesco is one of the Italians. <laughs> Don't panic. Yeah, did you see that, Amberton? So I was on the Model World Expo Facebook event page and um, I saw that there was a guy who was, he was like, my family and I aren't gonna be able to make it to Model World Expo. He was in the event page and he's like, I ha so I have tickets, message me if you want a cheaper thing. And I was immediately suspicious because I knew that Model World Expo tickets had not even gone on sale yet. And also I know that Model World Expo isn't, I don't think it's like a big, family event like I just I mean I'm just guessing but I don't it doesn't strike me like when I went to the one in Chicago yes families could come but mostly they didn't buy advanced tickets to it they would come and and just show up like for, you know off the off the street and then get tickets at the door but it didn't seem like something that anybody would plan to bring their family to so I was already suspicious and then, um, so I messaged him, because I, I haven't bought my tickets yet, obviously, because they're not even on sale yet. I messaged him, and I was like, hey, what, at first I said, I said on the page, I said, I need a ticket. And so he messaged me and was like, how many tickets do you need? I, I, I still have some. And I, met, I wrote him back and I said, I said, how do you still, how do you have tickets? They've not even gone on, they're not even going on sale until next month. And of course he didn't answer me. And so I messaged him back and I said, are you a scammer? <laughs> and then I noticed he had deleted his comment off the Facebook thing. And so I just thought we better put an FYI just in case, you know, somebody else got scammed because I could see it happening. 
and yeah, that's what happened. But dang, people are, so that's a scam. Basically to go into Facebook events that are happening and offer tickets to people, which is, that's really, sh you know, shitty if you ask me. No, nope, pardon my, I'm probably gonna get demonetized on YouTube for that, but that's super not cool. Yeah, we have a new stream time because it's daylight savings time in the U.S. It's only, I think, when do you, when does your stream, when does your stream stop, uh, when does your daylight savings time start, Amberton? Unexpected, hello. Yeah, I think, I think the Europe and, and the U.K. start their daylight savings time at different times. Nobody, nobody's on the same page with I, I hate daily savings time, by the way. I think it's a dumb thing, outmoded. We don't need it. Oh, look at the subscriber. Forever Night, thank you so much. You're awesome. Hope you're having a good day, too. F O R E V E R. And uh, one, sorry, one G H D. There you go. Thank you so much, Forever Night. Your clocks changed the last weekend of the month. So yeah, so only about. Don't forget to readjust your times. I think I need to put. Do I need to put? Are we GMT minus five now? Currently, are we gonna? Are we gonna be GMT minus five? I can never remember. Yeah, we started early because it's actually almost three o'clock here now. Don't forget, Lamuna subbed. Why did I not see that? Let me check. I missed it. Oh, I see 27 months. Laminus, thank you. And thank you, Rumble, for telling me. Lots of hype. Laminus. We're going to go get sushi on, um, on Sunday, Laminus. So put that in your calendar. Okay? Sunday afternoon. After the con's over, we're gonna get a, get people together. Did we? Uh, is that how I say your name? Thank you for sub subbing. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> S Y D W Y E. Oh, ah, Blaze Winterborn's following too. So gorgeous, Sophie Shoshi. <laughs> Sophie is my Sophia is my daughter's name. <laughs> Thank you so much. You like this? Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> All right, where am I? Where was I? You've been wanting to do a true metal full dragon? No, you're fine. Everybody does that. Um, so here's the funny thing. You can go back, you can go on with two SHs. Go she. <laughs> um, you can go back on YouTube and find the whole video where we painted this. And so you can get the whole, like, true metallic metal, you know, tutorial of it. And it was really, we, I was really, we did a lot of airbrushing. So this was actually pretty easy to do. There you go. You got it. And do I say your name? Is it Sid Wee or Sid Y? Or is it with the, is the W pronounced V, Sid V? Hi, Nixton. How are you? Did we? Awesome. Okay, I got it. I got it the first time. Perfect. So all I'm doing in here is just going in here, brighten up some, and that already pops and makes him look interesting, doesn't it? And I don't know if you can see how I am painting. I'm gonna show you on my hand. I'm kind of doing these little rubbing brush strokes and then when I come in here with some more paint and when I want to darken that part or get more paint if I want to add more paint see a little bit of layers at a time gotta let it dry in between yeah you know, it layers up and it gets darker and darker I'm just adding a little bit more at a time so I get a nice thick layer 
Boop. Never didn't, wait, for Everest Night says, unfortunately I'll not be at Adepticon, but y'all have fun on my birthday. And it's the last Sunday of the con. Ah, oh, cool. Well, happy birthday, Forever Night. We will, we will have sushi and toast in your honor. <laughs> Amberden says, very nice. I found they have some extra rooms in the main hotel for Model Expo. I just booked a room, so I'll need tickets when they're released. Yes. Ah. And Sidweed's going to be at Gary Con, just north of Adepticon. Is that the same weekend? Sushi and toast. I don't know about toast because I'm gluten intolerant, but you can have some toast. And, oh, toast as in, <laughs> you troll. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> toast as in toast like with like some sake, right? That kind of toast. <laughs> Do you see this water ball? I don't want that to end up on my model, so I have to get that off. A little bit of red, there we go. Ooh, I like has already changed the look of the model quite a bit. There's a lot of things I still need to finish. I didn't realize I need to finish. We may not be end entering this unless it gets finished. We'll see. I can't remember. I think I didn't enter. I took it to Reapercon, but I didn't enter it because I was like hoping to kind of work on it at Reapercon, and I didn't work on it at Reapercon. Didn't work on it. Same weekend. Yeah, that stinks. Well, Gary Con is supposed to be cool. I wonder if there's anybody who's going to try to go to both. Not too far. It's, now, it's Gary Con is more like less miniature y and more DD esque. You know, I'm not sure. I feel like my husband's been to Gary Con before, but not me. <laughs> Art of Dying to Disney will be a both. Cute! Well, uh, Mike Disney is really good at, you know, doing all the things. It is all about D&D, I thought so. Yeah, it did take me a moment. <laughs> You're good, though. You're getting better at getting me... Oh, I see a little. Oh. I like that. I like that red because your eye kind of. I think the reason why we didn't go full red last time was because your eye kind of goes to it and we wanted it to go more toward. But I think with some of the other stuff I'm going to do on the on this metallic here. I had a coaching this morning with Aaron Lovejoy and he went over stuff with me and we come up we came up with some good ideas for basically finishing touches of this dragon. <laughs> Lurking mode, okay. Yes, it is named after Gary Gygax. That's that makes complete sense. Of course, it's D and D. Now, what what happened to the old Gen Con in Geneva? Is there nothing in Geneva anymore at all? Is that what? Did Gary Con take the place of it? The other thing is, why is Mike Disney going to Gary Con? Is he just doing a publicity promo, like, stop by? Or is he actually planning on doing something there? Is 
There we go. Oh, I need a little black right here because this is, whoops. Now, I'll create a little shadow here. It's a little too dark. Where's my burgundy? Better. Okay, now, y'all see, we can make a dark shadow, a little dark line. I'm doing really thin, little dark lines. Yay! Right, give me one second, I'm gonna look at chat. Gen was only in Geneva for a short time, then they moved to Milwaukee to handle the size. That makes sense. Ah, wait, wait. Now it's in Indiana. Yeah, yeah, no, I knew that. Both happened. You think he's coming to see some of us D&D streamers? Oh, ah, okay. That's awesome. Dora. Dora Satan Nardza. I know I messed that up. Wait. Or... I don't know. Tell me how to break that name up so I can say it correctly. <laughs> I love it. Some weeks ago, you had some big child creative um, minis on stream. It would be amazing to paint on stream. Ma amazing models and good size. Yes. Yes, Dora. Actually, I have a whole bunch of those models. And not only that, we're going to auction. I'm going to, we should do that. We should set that up. We should set that up today. I'm gonna set up the auction today. Creative, hold on, I'm gonna go get these models. I'll be right back. Hazardous, thank you for this follow, welcome. Okay, hold on. So Jorah's got talking about my, my cre big child models. Remember we got all those out? Big Child just released a huge like contest that they're doing for their models. And I was talking about, you know, basically selling off a bunch of these models that I have and painting one of them on stream. And I thought we should do that while the contest is just started. And that way, maybe we could all enter the contest together. I thought that would be really fun. What do you guys think? Let me see some emotes if you're interested in that, because I can start up the auction for those like later today after the stream is over. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get those models. Here's my mic. All right, some of you are interested. All right, so here's here's the models that I got. I got these from a friend of mine who worked with Big Child on the Kickstarter. And so he had a lot of these models as a promo, right? And we worked on fixing them and gluing them back together. And did this is the one that you guys wanted me to paint, wasn't it? Does anybody remember? My wallet calls shotgun on the anchor orc. <laughs> I love it. Well, what I'm thinking of doing, we'll put, up, we'll put these up for blind auction, just like the other ones. You bid what you want, support the stream, and then we'll reveal the winners like as soon as possible, probably, I'm thinking. Personally, I would prefer you to see the paint them. Would be great contest content, I think. Dora, I don't have time to paint all of them, but I'm definitely gonna paint one of them. And we vo I think we voted on this one. You think so too? This is the one that everybody wanted to see me paint. And so there was some more. The other ones, some of them I'm not like as interested in either. I might keep one of them. This is Chucky. He's he's pretty cool. There's a little blade I still need to fix on him. Let's just show you guys these because they're so good. This guy, he didn't have an arm. I don't know if we should, we can auction him anyway. You know, like somebody 
We might have some other arms in here that you could attach. Somebody wants them for ten dollars. They can have them for ten. This guy, like he's awesome. It was the undead pack? Yeah, I thought so. So this is this is mine. I'm gonna just put a little drop of little red on his foot so I don't forget that one's mine. Okay, then I'll remember. And then this guy. There's so many. Like I said, I think if we can sell these for a good amount. Speaking of which, um, I will tell you guys the blind auction for the pre-painted, the painted minis that I went ahead and put on auction, they averaged out around $44 a bid. That was, was that my average? No, that wasn't my average. That wasn't my average. Uh, I gotta figure out what my average was. It was an average. I'll figure it out. I'll tell you in a minute. Here, let me go back here. Ah! Put the chicken in the stump. Yes, that was a <laughs> that was a possibility. Oh, this one is awesome. I might keep this one. I might keep this one because I I really like him. That was the second one. Not on eBay. We have a web form, Jora, that I, I post, and then I just email all the winners. I'm, I'm going to show you how we did it. So, here, I'm going to, let's do exclamation point auction. The, the, the bidding is currently closed, but you can, sh you can see, oops, you can go see the web form, how I had it for this past auction. Auction. And the way it works is that you bid whatever you feel like whatever you're bidding on is worth it. Like, let's say you're bidding on this guy. You want to say like, okay, that's, I think it retailed for like 65 euro or I don't remember. But anyway, um, you can always go look at the retail. Oh, I just noticed he has a crab claw or a foot. I'm keeping this one, guys. I just, oh, I just noticed the crab claw. That is so freaking cool. All right, so let's say I wanted to bid on this one, okay? And I thought, well, I really want this model, so I'm gonna bid $65, and then I enter it in, and then I just wait until Shoshi re reveals the bids, and I hope that, that's, that no one else overbid me, because I don't get to see, and nobody else gets to see my bid, and it's blind, and so you bid what you can afford, and the only p way you pay is if you win. And then I email you and I send you an invoice and we calculate the shipping, add the shipping to the invoice and it's easy. There you go. So you can go look at the auction. The auction, we'll, we'll, we'll do the auction for this. I'll set it up today after stream. I'm keeping that guy. This guy and this guy. These are mine. Oop. <laughs> so, you know what? Since we're on the topic, let's just do... Hmm. <laughs> Let's just do the auction results so that Jor can see what how this works because you can see the whole process. Oh, so, hold on, let me put these away for a second. In the box, back in the box, back in the board. These are so gorgeous. Ah, okay. Um, let's get the minis out. So we've got the bard. Hold on, I'm gonna show you guys. These are the models. We got the war forged barbarian. This is the bard, the barbarian, Pal the female paladin, the swashbuckler, the witch hunter, and the monk. Wait, there was one more. Here he is, male paladin. Okay, and I'm gonna show you guys on screen. Hold on a second. All right, hold on, hold on. Show you the bid results. And I've already got it all sorted and figured out so you can see who bid and how much they bid and who won for each model. So let's take a look and I've hidden the email addresses already. So nobody is getting docs. 
Okay, hold on. Where's my whip trips? Oh, I got to do it like this. Whip trips. Okay, here we go. All right. Take a look. This is the spreadsheet. This is how everything's sorted out. Diomedes Industries won the Barbarian, which was for $30. So he bid the most on the, the Barbarian. So that's Diomedes Industries. Cerulean bid on the Bard $100. So the Bard is going to Cerulean. Where's the Bard? There he is. Then Female Paladin is going to Sentient Bait. Their sentient bait is the female paladin. The monk is going to Tony, right here. Tony is getting the monk. And then we, so then we go down to Bad Blood Boss. One, the Warforged Barbarian for 40. Um, and then Rumble won the Witch Hunter for 52, that is awesome. And then, so there are two two models that did not get bid on. And so I said that the two, well, so I said the top bid would get any extra models that did not get bid on. And we have two bids for 100, Brilliant and Tony. So I will send, so hold on, I'm gonna go back here. Two. So the two models that did not get big bid on were the Paladin and the Swashbuckler. So I'm going to contact um, Tony and Trillian, and they're going to each get an, ex an extra mini for their $100 bid, because they both bid 100 That was the top bid. You just happened to have two. So they each get two minis for their bid, which is awesome. Yes! No! Are, Diomedes, are you Tony? That's Tony. One, two. And Trillian. Hold on, let's go back and look at this. I want to make sure you see. Okay. So, Bard is 100 and the Monk is 100. Are you Tony? <laughs> this is the killing. I couldn't touch a show sheet for this price. Well, I need to know if you're Tony. <laughs> Thanks for following, Omar. Mad love. What is happening on my screen? Hold on a second. This is weird. Burp. I'm gonna pull this. Hey, is this weird? The whip trips messed up my whip trip screen. There we go. Ah! <laughs> no, you're Diomedes. Then you did not win an extra mini. Wait, maybe you did. Maybe you did. Hold on, let me look. Diomedes, you won. I only have you down for the Barbarian because you bid 30 and that's not a top bid. I know, I'm not trying to make you all excited. So, Vabla, so Diomedes bid on both the Warforged Barbarian and, and the Barbarian, but, but Bad Blood Boss bid 40. He bid just a little bit more on the Warforged Barbarian. So, Tony and Terillion both bid 100 on their mini on the Monk and the Bard, and so they are each getting an extra mini. So I'm sorry, Diomedes. It's okay, you're so happy. <laughs> but you did get you did get a cool one. Okay. You saw your name. Oh, okay. Whew. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody overhyped for no reason. Teveston, hello, how are you, Teveston? Saw your name. <laughs> okay, how do I pay you? I have your email. I will send you an invoice. The invoice will include shipping if you're in the US of $10 because that's how much it costs to send everything priority, which automatically covers it with insurance and everything. If you live outside the US, I'll email you and get your full address and all the customs information I need, and then I'll get a quote. If you don't want to pay for shipping at that point, then I will give it to the next person in line because I don't want you to be surprised with shipping or anything. So the next, if you decide, I don't want to pay that much for shipping to the UK or to Australia or whatever, because that's insane because the US postage is crazy right now, then it's totally okay. I'm not going to make you, um, but I will get a quote from you if you did win. And then you get to decide whether you want to pay 
that entire amount. And then if you do, then I will invoice you for the entire amount plus shipping. And if you don't, then I'll go down to the next person in line who made a bid. So that is how, that is how you pay me, super easy. And it's nice, because you don't have to, I don't have to deal with tape, uh, with, with eBay fees and all of that, and because PayPal does take a little bit of a cut, but it's not like compared to like eBay, where you get PayPal cut and eBay cut, you know. So yeah, it worked out really well. We, um, we definitely made enough money that we can definitely do this again, and I had a good time painting these. Um, so if we ever want to do this again, I'll, and I have the right amount of minis and stuff, I think eight's like the perfect number of minis. Because I think, like I said, there were two minis that did not get bids. And so that way, you know, everything gets... Can I send a mule to Adepticon to collect the mini? Yes! That's a great idea, Rumble. And is Ash one of those mules? <laughs> or Flick? I will definitely, that's a great idea. And then no shipping for you, which is great. No shipping, no shipping. Which, why do we need to give the Royal, the Royal Police, Royal Police, Royal Postage, Royal Mail, that's it. Royal Mail, any more money for that and all that. We don't need to do that. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to, I'm glad that's done. That was fun. I really liked doing that, guys. And it, I want to tell you something. The money, if, if everyone ends up paying the same bids that they bid, the money that I made on this auction was more than I made in subs this month. So I will tell you that, you know, it really helps me when you guys bid on these and you get a mini and I get painting, we get good content. Everybody wins, it's great. It's it's really means a lot to me that you even bid. So I really appreciate it. Love you. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna work on my dragon. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna since we're gonna do the auction for the um the, uh, what was it? The the models for Big Chap. We should show these off. One more time, okay, I'm going to show you the models that we're going to be doing our next auction. And these are all going to be unpainted, right? And I will maybe, uh, maybe I'll auction off this guy as a final, we'll do a, a final blind auction for this guy. I think that would be cool so somebody could get a really nice painted mini out of that. And I think I'm keeping, I'm keeping that bad boy for myself for sure. There's that. There's the Sharky No Arm. I don't know what his name is. He's got no arm. We should put the chicken in the arm, maybe. We'll send him along with some different bits and stuff. There's somebody has some sculpting skills, I know. There's that. Maybe just bid like five bucks on him. This one, this one is a good one. Very minimal cleanup on that one. This guy is the anchor guy. That's the one you were talking about, wasn't it? Is that the one you were interested in, Rumble? If if you we'll do the bidding, and so this will all go down before Adepticon. So if you win it, I can bring it to Adepticon and for your mule. And then there's this guy. Ah, that's the one with the hook. There's another hook though somewhere. And then of course. There was loads of other models and bits and goodies that I was going to bundle together with these so everybody would get a, like a little goblin or a little monkey. Our, yeah, anchor for the win. Okay, good. And yeah, I think we will we'll bundle a bunch of stuff together. And I'll, I'll work on that today so that... I'll put up pictures and everything, and you can make your bids. And, and this way, if anybody who bid on the other models wants me to hold on to stuff and ship it all together, I can do that as well, because it won't cost any more, generally, to ship stuff together. 
Doop, doop, doo. Okay. That is gonna be fun. I'm excited. Bubble wrap. Yoshi, will you be posting pics of the big child stuff? Yes, including the, I'm gonna bundle things. So like I said, there's gonna be a little, maybe a little goblin with each one or a little monkey. Every model will come with an extra little dude. So you are gonna get multiple stuff. Daimi says, I'm telling you, Shoshi, I've always wanted your work. I'm just so stoked to get some from my shelf and support you. Yay, that's exactly why we're doing this. That's exactly. So, one, so number one, I'm painting, creating content. Number two, I'm getting paid a little bit of money to do the content from the Mincher producer and giving that Mincher producer some basically free advertising for for life because those goes up go go up on YouTube and become like almost like a commercial for that mini forever. Number three, you guys get a mini, the ones who bid and or you're supporting me. And so it's like so layered and so awesome. You know, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Yep, you type too slow. <laughs> That's okay. For a moment there, I forgot about the human kind of mule and <laughs> thinking about the animal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm almost done with the reds on this. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit more here. I feel like the reason I dumbed down the reds in the past was because it was a little too... No, that seems like just the right amount of red. Okay. All right, so one of the things Aaron Lovejoy said was we need some kind of reddish or residue. I'm gonna use some transparent brown. I'm gonna put this on my palette. And a little, I'm gonna add a little black to some parts of it. It just needs to be red-ish. Hmm. Do it on, let's do it on the part that's more hidden that way can't see it as well. Ooh. So he said it's not like rusting it, but it's it's just kind of tinting it because for whatever reason this doesn't quite look real unless there's some. And I really actually like that. It does look kind of cool. All right, we're gonna do that on the other parts of this. Ooh, all in here. I'm going to add a little black in there too because this is, it all be dark-ish. You see this? Is it on camera? All that. I need purples too. Transparent. I'm going to use some Druchy Violet for my purple. i put this on my palette. I have a so I have a palette over here. When you mix the Druchy Violet, watch what happens. I'm gonna mix Druchy Violet with this brown and it's, it's just really rich. Eh, it's not being rich. Hey, there we go. Better-ish. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put some of that down in there. To give me some shadow. Oh, that is already looking badass, doesn't it? Sorry, I don't mean to get so excited. <laughs> it's okay. Those browns kind of help with the golds, don't they? And then it's gonna make the rest of the model look even shinier on spots, huh? It's like it's it's like dirt. It's not it's not patina so much, but it's just like you know it got it got dirty. There's some grime. Even though he's an emperor dragon, he's he doesn't clean his armor too much. He's too spoiled. Somebody just he, he fired he fired the uh, the help. rule of cool absolutely right that 
changed everything. That looks so good. This was so boring and it stood out so much and it didn't, something about it just didn't jive with me and now I'm kind of in love with it. Just this little dry, you know, I'm gonna see if I can find some weathering powders too and just add a little grimy grime. Oop, that's too much. Too much. Oh my God, I love it so much now. It just needed something. The dirt around these rivets. So when I do the rivets, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little. Oops, that's too much. I'm gonna put a little bit of um, bling on top of those rivets in a minute here. That around. I love it. Now uh, it's getting darker, so I'm gonna get my droopy. Oh, wow! Add some more droopy violet up in here. I can't. I can't get over how much of a difference that made. This is something that Aaron told me to do. He's like in my coaching. So I've been getting coaching from Minter Monthly because I don't really watch videos. I like to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching with different teachers. Um, and it makes a big difference for me when they tell me advice like this. Dang. Love it. I'm sorry, I'm a little enthralled right now. Let's, let me show you the difference. This is what it looked like before and then after. That Just that warm tones. Fix butt. Fix boot. Boot. Okay, same thing over here. Up in the crevices. Where's my black? I need just a little black right here. Okay, I'm in, okay, I'm in like. to match them so they don't look too dissimilar. Yay! Thank you for following Sister Mary Napalm and Casual Painter. Whoa, thank you for the raid. Hello, people from Casual Painter stream. Wag, Sweaty Northman, thank you. Ecto, -gam Ecto Gamut. Aaron coaches you too. Yeah, he's good, isn't he? Hello, Casual Painter. We're working on a dragon. Rawr. This is our creature caster entry for Resin Beast at Adepticon, and we're just trying to get some final touches on it. Some more browns in this metal here and it's already looking amazing I just have to tell you guys the the pro krill transparents are so good for weathering okay watch what happens now when I get my what am I gonna use I'm gonna use some silver thank you I appreciate that Oh man, I just chipped my nail a little bit. Hey McNoel, thank you for the subscription. The lunch meat spelled backwards. L U N C H 
M with a capital E A. It's easier to do it like that. <laughs> yes, you need to get the transparents if you don't have them. They're so good. I'm so mad about this little little chip right now. Let me just take some green and see if I can. There, at least it's green now. <laughs> All right. Now, this is the silver that I was opening as we got raided by Casual Painter. Hello. I have Lizzo in my head. Our staff says, just a personal opinion, but I think in this case, the browns are helping give realism because it's stimulating dirt. Yes, exactly. But the color is so close to his other skin that it gives the impression of a ref reflection of his own skin on that metal part. Yeah, that is, I, I agree. I like that idea. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. All right, so let's see what happens if I use the silver on these little rivets. We have gotta bring all these back. A little bling. They might not be even clean enough. We might need to get the white metal out. Yeah, I think I'm going to get the white metal out because those are going to go bing, bing. They're going to make that noise. Watch. Bing, bing. Okay. Whoa. When you're painting metals, metal has white reflections generally. Let's see if this one makes a bigger difference. Yeah, it's slightly brighter. Oh, yeah, that's much brighter, actually. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take this white metal and on all of the pointy parts, I'm going to give it a little other highlight and see what happens here. You guys see that? Little details. Oh. This is what you call white lining. Well, you can do it with white, but you can also do it with this metallic medium. Ah! I almost dropped my glasses on the floor. Rescue my glasses. Dino, hello, hello, Vigatus dear. Um, I got a package the other day from Craig Dino, who sent me a a huge box of Schokoladen. Schoko. Schokoladen auch Deutschland. Sehr, sehr lecker. <laughs> now, I did sample some of it. But I'm going to be taking a lot of it to the chocolate party at Adepticon. I'm going to have a chocolate party with some, some of my friends. Thank you. Dankeschön. I don't know how to say like, like really, really thank you. Like, is there a way, way to like emphasize gratitude in German? There we go. I like that. It just really completes it, doesn't it? It makes it's like there's dirt on there. Everything looks good. Oh, and also, thank you for not sending any Kinder eggs because those are not allowed in the United States. But all of the other Kinder products, it seems so good. All right, there are little. Tiny, like bumps, and I'm just gonna go in here and highlight a few of these little spots. Okay. 
Tinder eggs are okay in the U.S. No, no, they're not. Pun expected. You don't, you don't know. The eggs that you've seen have been specially designed for the U.S. and do not have the like little capsule-shaped toy inside. It had something. They're completely different. Um, and they don't taste the same either, not at all. But they do have a kind of Kinder Egg, but not the kind of Kinder Egg that has the, not the band, not the band one. Yeah, you hope you like, yes, I know, I love the Bueno Bar, I just, I, so the only thing is, I wish I would have said this to you before, but everyone else will love it, um, is that I cannot eat the Bueno Bar anymore because I'm, uh, ich habe kein Gluten und und Weizen, have a gluten allergie, yeah, and so all my friends will get to have the gluten, but they will be really happy, and I was really happy to see that you included it, because I knew that you did hear me say it, and I thought that was really nice. <laughs> all right, so that, let's show you, this is with the white lined highlights, and this is without. You can see the difference. Bing, bing, bing. And I'm gonna do a few little blings on these rivets as well. God, that makes a difference. Oh, that looks amazing. Oh no, more for friends, exactly. <laughs> Why on earth are Kinder Eggs banned? So in 1902, the, the US banned um, to, uh, food items that had toys in them because I guess some kids died from swallowing something that had a toy in it. And the thing about the U.S. is once something is on the books with the laws, it takes a very long time to get it back off the books. So rather than overturn it, you know, and, and make an exception, it's just still, still illegal and silly and they just haven't gotten around to doing anything. And so what, what the, uh, the alternative is, is Kinder makes a specific new kind of egg just for the U.S. And it's not, not good. It's not as good. It's, uh, I don't know, but at least it's a compromise, you know? So like even Cracker Jacks, I don't know if you've ever heard of Cracker Jacks. It was a type of popcorn with caramel on it and it came in a box and it had a toy in it. Well now, you can only get like a sticker or a tattoo. It rarely ever has any kind of toy in it, just in case, right? Because of that whole ban thing. It's funny, because Uhu glue is also banned in the United States. Maybe because people will Inhale it. I don't know. All right, look at the difference between this side with the blinged out um, rivets, and this is the side without the blinged out rivets. And look at the difference. It's just a small, small difference, but it's really eye catching. You want to give your, your eye something to kind of like bounce around on. Yeah, U.S. law being silly. Who would have ever thunk it? Yeah, Sweaty North Men's laughing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, bling, bling, bling. Do the little rivets here. See the difference? It's such a such a big difference. Oh, and there's I forgot there's a little rivet here too. At least on part of them. Some of them have a little rivet, some of them don't on that middle scale. Let 
Okay, now here's the part where I just do a little white edge highlight and especially on the corner. You know what, every country has crazy silly laws, Amberton, not just the US. I'm pretty sure that you cannot bring a sword. There was a guy on YouTube who decided to break a whole bunch of laws. Like there's rules about like you can't shout something uh, on, you know, in front of parliament. I can't remember, but there, you can go on YouTube and there's this guy who breaks like all these old hundred and couple hundred year old rules. You, oh, you can't wear a suit of armor in parliament. And he went and he got a suit of armor and wore it in parliament just to be cheeky, right? Cannot wear a suit of armor in front of parliament. I think, yeah, go, go on YouTube and you can find that video because it's funny. It is funny what he does. I guarantee you every country has some sort of goofy, goofy law. You have some classic laws at both the national and the local level, yeah. I'm sure you can shoot a Scot with an arrow inside York City. <laughs> That's not funny if you're Scottish. I apologize, but... <laughs> the <laughs> I'm just imagining like living in York and you know the day they came up with that and how close is York to the Scottish border and maybe that makes sense you know because like maybe the, the Scots were like barbarians that came in and terrorized York but it, I think the reason why I'm laughing is now that's so absurd and so silly right all right, over here, you can see that I went over part of this buckle, so I need to fix that. I'm gonna use this brown. <laughs> Something daft like that, yeah, daft. Blaze Winterborn says, in the UK, the Licensing Act of 1872 makes it illegal to be drunk while in charge of a cow. <laughs> Does that mean... <laughs> How's that going to work? <laughs> Is that in the entire UK? <laughs> Casual Painter says, oh, we have a really old law about not having a hop, hop field. Oh, wow. Is that because, interesting. Hops, hops is for beer, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm sure that, that somebody ignored that rule a while ago, right? All right, I'm taking a little yellow ochre because I just noticed that none of the leather straps, whoops, none of the leather straps on any of him are weathered at all. And I'm gonna need your help, Diomedes, if you're here, because I need to weather the straps and I need to know if I'm doing it right. Every house must have a, oh, every house has must have a hops field. What? So there was a lot of beer growing in the UK at one time. <laughs> Sorry, friend, I'll have to arrest you for drunk herding. What happens, like, I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> My mind went to a different place when I was just thinking of, like, what could happen when you're drunk with a cow, and I don't want to get into that, so we're not gonna. <laughs> yes, <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> you picked a really funny time to say that. I ascend. <laughs> Uh, rubbish, we're just talking about how in the UK, there's a law in the books about how it's illegal to be drunk with a cow. So funny. 
And then right then, as you as we said that, you said, I ascend. <laughs> Blaze says, I think there's also a law that requires men and boys over a certain age to attend archery practice. Hmm. 1700s, but you think it's still on some book. <laughs> yeah, thank you for following Traverman. Traverman, Traverman, Traveman. There we go, Travman. Traveman, it's a new one. So there's also, so we got into this topic because Bergdino sent me some Kinder, Kinder products. Thankfully, he did not send me a Kinder egg, which is banned in the US. So we started talking about silly laws that are still on the books, right? And there's lots of them, every place has them. And so we were talking about some of the UK's silly laws, like did you know that it was illegal to be arrested for wearing a suit of armor at Parliament. I don't know if you knew that, but don't do that. So with this, I need so, hmm. I need kind of a, be saturated. Here, let's do this olive flesh mixed with my ochre. I'm trying to, I really need like a taupey kind of dried leather color. Dried leather? Mm, maybe, mm, no, no, no. Let's do this color, maybe mixed with something. Hold on, I'm gonna put glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Tell me when I get this right. I'm, I wanna mix this and this. Ooh, that's it. Boom. We'll put a little yellow in there. There you go, you can see that nice. My favorite law is that farmers have the right to drive geese through the center of London. <laughs> super chill stream. It is a super chill stream. We like to, we like to be chill. Some people call me like the Bob Ross of mini painting because I'm chill. There's a classic story about sitting at exams at Oxford Uni. One year, a student demanded that a, pie, a pint of ale from the proctors. Oh, he demanded a pint of ale from the proctors while he was sitting in an exam. They checked the rules and found out he was entitled. The following year, the story goes, the first student to follow suit and as for his pint was promptly evicted from the exam for failing to wear his sword. <laughs> I need an afro. Why? Why do I need an afro? That makes no sense. Yeah, that is a good story, Amberton. Very good story. All right, there we go. I got the right color for this. Leather, we're gonna weather this leather. Weather this leather. Weather it, we're gonna, I'm gonna underneath all the little holes. I need to, hmm, do this on the ends of the, oh, I really like that. some little micro textures in here. This is what the it. that already looks looking good. And oh here, this is where we're gonna Give our little mark. Whenever there's a little bend, gonna weather that. Oh, I like it. Okay. See, that's already giving that some realism and some life. And then now it doesn't look quite just so painted on. You just claim to be the Bob Ross. Yes, 
I do. I need to get, maybe we'll do that for a, like a, a cosplay thing one day. That could be cool. A little fun. Under each little hole here, there's a little pinhole. I'm gonna give it a little light reflection there. Now I did drop my glasses on the floor. Ah, and I just noticed another little rivet thing here. Fill that in. This is the ticky, ticky detail half of this painting. Now on this little piece of strap where I feel like I got a little too much weathering, I can go back with my brown and just give it a quick little glaze and it still looks weathered, but it's not quite so bright. And it looks a little bit more natural now, like naturally worn. Good, good. Ooh, that looks pretty good, yes. Now again with the little white underneath buckle hole. I'm sure there's a technical term for a buckle hole. Some leather worker probably came up with it. A new diameter is going to pop in. Hold on, I got to get my glasses off the floor so I can read my chat. Dr. Panditeka says, so many different gold shades. I know, I did a lot. So that's the thing is I was gonna show you some more. So I have this greenish color that Aaron was telling me that I need to add in. So I'm gonna try it on some spots and almost like use it as a highlight on some spots. Like let's, let's start up here. Ooh, what? That looks amazing. Okay, I'm gonna do that some more places. We're just gonna use this Green, it's like a peridot color. Here, I'm gonna mix this up so you can see it. This is the color, boom. It's got some gold kind of flake in it. We're gonna just take that on some of these scales to create a different color of highlight. And that's looking dang cool. But that is also the trick to keeping this dragon from looking like a, oh, wow, look at that, that looks so good. It keeps it from looking like a trophy. Does that make sense? Like he doesn't look like a hood ornament. Like on the, on the, on the bonnet of your car, if you're in the UK, we call it a hood in the, in the, uh, in the US in the bonnet on the bonnet I like that green it makes the it makes the purple go even darker doesn't it people won't even realize that they are seeing it it's gonna look really cool I'm 
I love it. Oh my gosh. I'm going to take a little bit. Oh, got another. Is that another raid? Mark Goodwin is hosting us. That's awesome. Can you guys see the green down the, down the center there? So beautiful. Hi, Katie Lynch. Hello. So, but I think I used a lot of different gold shades. So let me see. We've used a, like a dark brown bronze color. We used a regular gold, kind of like a yellow gold, a um, bright gold, and now we're using a green, green metallic. Let's do the green metallic on the arm up here and see what happens. Looking badass. There's a purple on it as well. There's a purple metallic. That's really looking cool. Like that. I want it to be subtle though. Hmm. I'm gonna do green highlight. Just shading some of my some of my areas here. Oh, I like it. Putting it next to that purple looks so cool. I, I really like it on that arm. I want to make sure not to do it, overdo it. I don't want it to not read as gold anymore. I still have a lot of shading yet to do. Where's my Drucci Violet? Did it dry up on me? Yeah, a little bit. Um, so there's some still some dark lining that I've got to do in a good amount of this. Flip it. Where's my, I need more Drucci. Okay, I put a big amount in there, so hopefully that will get soaked up. So first I'm adding my shadow down here. We did all of that up there. Ooh, this whole spot needs shading. Jeez. None of this should be bright gold. All in that leg and shadowed. What's cool is when you brush the gold over the, or the, sorry, the purple over the gold is it turns this warm purplish brown and it's really lovely. All right, no problem, Mark. As I am in, have a good meal. This gave me an idea. I'm gonna throw some green glaze into the recesses of my robes and see if that ups the contrast. Good idea. Can you imagine? Can imagine that you did quite a number of shades. That's not a one coat spray paint job. So <laughs> no. Yeah, it's not a one point one coat spray spray paint job. But if you go and watch the vod on YouTube, we did do a lot of stuff. I mean, it was. It was an interesting thing. A lot of the shadows on this. But so if you can see, there's lots of purples all over the place in here. And I didn't do as much on the tail. I, I need to do a lot of work on the tail in order to get it to be the same as the body. So the first thing a judge is going to pick this up and go, what did you do? You just phoned it in on the tail. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm going to work on it. <laughs> yeah, even just that right there is looking already better. A little bit. All right, where's this gold right here? See, and I can come back in and highlight stuff.
I'm gonna put some purples in the in the part inner part of this leg. Do a nice little wash. And I'll probably come back in to highlight another point. But that if we darken things in the front of the model. Oh, we got another subscriber. Ash Kedelin, thank you for the rate or for the 11 months. <laughs> There's Ash. There we go. Thank you so much. How reflective will the gold be? We will see gray from the rocks reflected. Ooh, I don't think so. It's What's going to happen, though, is I need to give some dirt and some color into the rocks, you know? Like, I need to have little areas that have a little bit of darkness, you know, brought out. And a little bit of, here, so let's do a little bit of that warm, dirty. There's no browns on the rocks right now, and there kind of needs to be some dirty bits in here to pull that rock together with the base, with the rest of the model. See, that alone right there is making a difference. Yes, thank you for that sub. I really do appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna add some purples into this part right here for darkness. And all of that hopefully is gonna pull pull your eye more toward the front by darkening some of the golds up. Right? That's my, that's my goal. All right, I wanna do something else Aaron pointed out is like on the hands, we're gonna take just a little of this Kunzite pink, pink metallic. And I just wanna see what happens when I brush a little bit of that pink. So you wanna humanize, he said. I kinda like that, it makes it more alive on the knuckles. Just add a little bit of rosy pink to the knuckles and it just makes a difference to me. It makes it look kind of alive. It also adds another element of color to the gold. Oh no, I just love it. That looks beautiful. Can you guys see that on camera? You see that? Hey, Ghost of Wolf, hello, how are you? And take a pink on this knuckles on the toeses. Toeses. Moses supposes his toeses are roses, and Moses supposes erroneously. Moses. Me, me, my Moses. That's from uh, the sound of, not the sound of music, singing in the rain. From singing in the rain. Moses supposes the toes are roses, and Moses supposes erroneously. I like that. I like that on his toes a lot because that changes things. I'm going to do a little on his, a little pink on his knee actually. So much is, he looks so alive now. He's so cool looking. Let's do a little bit of that green up here. We've got some highlight going on. Pretty good, just getting ready to paint. We need more old school musicals. I know, I agree. <laughs> I 
All right, on the this side, he's got kind of a got a little bit of pink to the pads of his dragon feet. Can you see his dragon feet very well? Gonna add a little pink shine. It, it almost looks pearlescent now on his feet. It looks really neat. Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? Let's do it on this side. I needed that extra something though to make it feel like it's not like a little gold trophy. Yas, yas. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna, you are not going to be able to see this because I'm going to try get this hand. Hmm. And with the pink knuckles. It really, it does act like a highlight a little bit, doesn't it? Somehow it's more exciting and it gives your eye something to kind of look at with it. You don't really know what you're looking at. Oh, that's too much pink. There we go. A little pink on the webbing here. Let me get some more of this green. Really does contrast with that purple and looks so good. It's, it's awesome because it's still reading me. It's still reading as gold. Notice I'm just kind of over brushing it where it looks like it needs it. Play a song, chill EDM, definitely. Hold on, let me get it out. Bear with me. All right, let's play some chill EDM. While we take a stretch break, it is 410. We could probably take a stretch break. Let's take a quick stretch break. I'm good. See if I can stand up. Everything is caught. My mic is caught. There we go. Oh, I just got a whole bunch of bones in my lower back. Did you hear that? <clears throat> pop, pop, pop. It is time to get out of gecko. We're going to get out of gecko in one second, Blaze Winterborn. We will do that. Hydrate first. Run away. Hey, okay, gecko time. This is a good time to do a gecko because we're in the middle of stretching and everything and 
popping backs. <laughs> All right, let's see who is available. I think Peppercorn is gonna be the one again. Come on, Peppercorn. Ginger Biscuit has been in the tubes lately, difficult to get. Oh, did you hear that? She just doesn't like it. She's kind of feisty right now, guys. Did you hear that little, it almost sounded like a little sneeze. That's kind of her little hissing. She does a little See, she's a little agitated. Let's let her calm down. Calm down, baby. Peppercorn is the spicy one. But can you also see how she's a little bit on the pale side? You see how she's a little bit drier looking? I think she may be getting ready to shed again, possibly. All right. Look at that chunk tail. Good tail, good. She weighs 1.6 ounces. Little. Aw, oh, baby pepper being spicy, yes. <laughs> there she is. Look at it, there we go. Lip. <laughs> winter, have you seen, Wind, uh, Blaze Winterborn, have you seen us get out of gecko before? Is this the first time that you've used that command? We have two of them. Her tail feels dry. We have two geckos, and Peppercorn is the grumpier one. And Ginger Biscuit is a little, she hides out a little bit more. She's also more sensitive to light anyway. Look at her, look at her, look at this dragon. That's why she's probably hissing. You could be intimidated. I think you might be right. That is an intimidating dragon, and it does look lizard-like. It looks like a predator. And she's about, it's about the same size as her, too. Where it going? That's your tail. Blepity blep. She's calmed down a lot just now. She seems like more curious. Like, don't touch me. Look at her. Watch what happens when you touch her back. Wait, watch. So you let her alone for a little bit. And then you touch her back, she'll kind of arch it. She'll be like, eee, don't touch me. Wanna jump down? You can do it, yes. Put little hands. <laughs> so cute. All right, I'm gonna put her back. That's enough exploring for the day. Be very happy to go back into her enclosure. Oh, there you go. Happy, happy. <laughs> Just go, eh. <laughs> you kind of like it when people touch your neck. <laughs> All right. So we got darkness in here. Um, what else? Let's try a little of this green, a little bit of this gold mixed together and see what happens. I get a little bit of a lighter gold. And if I put that on a few scales. Oh, that looks good. And it just doesn't look so haphazardly washed. You know what I mean? And then I can just get the edges of the scales as well. I want to do the purple again. This is the 
purple right here. Put a little bit of that in there. There really is a million colors on this dragon. And some more. I see some other spots that need lining. shadow there. Oh. There, underneath both arms. And I just noticed that I need to go in and fix some of the scales here that I messed up. with the wash. Okay. We were talking about, let's work on this tail. I need to meticulously work on the tail because the tail is really not painted much at all. Goshi, what mini is this? This is the emperor dragon. It's, it's really like a maxi, isn't it? Hold on, let me get the ear or the uh, wings and I'll show it to you in its full glory. This wing, Does that fit in there? Yep. All right, so I need to pin these wings in eventually. Oh, I see another spot that needs to be fixed. All right, so this is the Emperor Dragon from Creature Caster. And I see some spots that need to be fixed. Can't paint, got the shakes. Oh no, that's not good. Add a little bit of green to that. There we go. And a little bit more of that yellow and a little bit of that brown. Because Aaron said that what he does is he gets darker as we get in closer to the body. So I'm going to add some more Drucci Violet. Let's see if you can see that better. And that, that makes sense. Let's add a little bit of the transparent brown as well. Like that. What I could do is get in there with some transparent purple from Pro, from Pro Krill. Outside, I can hear the drops on the. Uh, we have a cover on our window well, a window well cover. Now some Drucci Violet. It's messy right now, but trust, we'll it will look better in a minute. Should have a, it should have a rider, but he's like such a badass. He doesn't, oh no. Can you guys see what happened? Hold on. Something happened. Something got flooched onto my dragon. I'm not sure what. Oh, it got on the gold too. Looks like it was one of my leather color, leather colors. Let's see if I can fix the gold. Better. Hmm. Here's a little treat. 
There we go. Much better. There's so much ticky detailing to do. And that's why I wanna just, like I'm kind of all over the place with this and I need to chill. And um, I feel like I got something else on the wing here too. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, go in. Maybe it goes on this one. Nope. There. Ah, this is what I thought. I saw a little... Alright, I'm gonna set these aside. I need to work on this tail. I need to make myself work on the tail. And he should have a rider, but he doesn't have a rider, so, you know, what you gonna do? All right, we're gonna start at the tip of the tail and I'm going to dark line each of these segments quickly as I can so you don't get too bored, but give them each a little drop shadow and a little bit of brown and a little bit of purple. Seems like the purple's looking best. Lynch, Katie Lynch says, so he can keep his hands free while he's flying back groceries home. <laughs> exactly. All of his uh, gold hoard. He's got to be able to put his gold up there, right? That's where he keeps his coins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, and I'm going to put a dark purple in there as well separating separating the tail from the rock it's already looking better and more painted Yes. Look at the difference between this and this. Just a little bit of dark lining. Those little details. Just like I did on his face, I went in into any each of the scales. I need to do the same thing and just any type of little crevice. I like saying that word, crevice. Um, put a little drop shadow into it. Make it more pronounced. the difference okay so I want you to watch this scale and then watch this scale because I'm going to keep them I'm going to do them a little different here hold on first I'm going to go in with the drew tea on this one I'm going to go into all of the little areas and define and don't get those to come out look at that and then Add a little of this brown from here. I'm going to take just a tiny amount, a little bit of black in some of the darkest areas. Look at how that looks compared to that. It looks more real already. Now a little bit of this green. A bit of this purple. Oop, too much purple. Ooh, kind of like that purple as an edge highlight 
It's cool looking. Oh, I really do like that. Let's do some green on the edges as well. Let's see what happens. Look what this is doing. This is green as a highlight. And look what it's doing. It looks real. It looks like it's a 3D thing that you can pick up separate from the rock that it's not, not glued to the rock. Okay. You know, when I'm getting impressed with myself, that it's a good thing. <laughs> okay, a little bit of edge. The tail gets very small, so I'm just gonna quickly do a little overbrush right down the center. Quick, 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 and I pick up all the little top edges, and then I'm going to take my little green and go in a little bit more to highlight each little piece and the end of it even more as well. And now, one thing I do want to do, which I did do a little bit, was I created kind of a shadow of his foot, but I feel like I need, I need to even go darker with it. But I'm scared. So, before I do that, um, let's finish this tail, because I don't want to get distracted. There's so much to do. Mark says, put orc on it. <laughs> yeah. I don't have an orc. I literally have, I don't even know. Have I even ever painted an orc? I don't think I have, except for like one from scale 75, which I don't think counts because it's not GW, right? All right, so you can see where I've got some tail worked on here. Let's do more. All of these little crevices. And some brown. I think I'm gonna need the, ooh, I love that brown right there. I'm just happy, because it looks better than it did. Let me get my, transparent purple and see if that is any different in value than the Drucci. I'm going to put some more transparent brown on my palette as well. Okay. Which I'm pretty sure you can get these at Adepticon, these transparents, and I highly recommend you do so if you're going to be there. All right, this is the transparent purple. It's much darker, just pure pigment, I think. Oh yeah, it's tons darker. That's better, much better. I really do like that bright purplish green highlight. I think it looks really good on that scale. Ah, uh, what did I get on my, I got some citrine. That's interesting. Let's see what happens when I add, this is the citrine. This is like a really bright yellow color. I'm gonna add this on my scales just on a few spots because I don't want it too much. I like that. More shading.
we can do a, a lot more of this purpley brown down here. Right, cover. Let me get some gold back up in this. Ooh. I like it. Let's do the green. My green is kind of soaking into my palette. I think that purple actually highlights it a little better than the green. Let's see what happens here. Yep. And when you mix the pur it's weird. Let me see what happens. When I mix the purple with the green, look, I get kind of a silvery color almost. Wait, that's too much purple. Let me try this again. All right, we got green, we got a little purple. Not quite silvery. A grayish. Oh, that's really pretty. It's almost like a... I don't know what to call that, but it kind of color shifts. like that green it's just got so much character to it one so when you paint big models does anybody here have some kind of hacks or kind of like tricks that they use for you know getting through large areas without losing their dang minds because that is one reason why I kind of skipped over a lot of this. Is it one of those things where you just got to teach yourself to love dark lining? Hmm. I kind of like how it's darker now and I'm, I'm starting to see, like I could go darker in a, actually a lot more places and pull my focus over here to his face by just shading in spots that didn't have didn't have it in the past. Without losing your mind. So you've been, <laughs> you've been doing it wrong the whole time? No, I don't think, I mean, I just, I have, so Katie Lynch, I have a very impatient um, temperament when it comes to painting. There's a lot of people out there. I mean, if you watch Flickster paint, you notice how slow he is and methodical. And that's definitely like his personal style. Whereas I can't paint that slow because I am very impatient. And so I paint to my temperament and so does Flick. Um, and so, but everybody paints a little different. So I was wondering, how do other people do it? Like, how do people get to that point where they're not going crazy painting the same thing over and over again? Yeah, I need, so there's a lot of shiny stuff going on here. I'm just kind of dulling it down a little bit again with this wash because I really want the focus to be over here. I can take out some of the really bright highlights with a little glaze, thin thin glaze of this transparent. Like I did down here in the tail, it's making a big difference.
Katie says, I'm very slow, but not methodical well, which is why commission work never suited me. I don't know. I guess if things aren't working well or are working well, I slip into a Zen mode while painting, but that hasn't happened for many years. And 814 Punk says, I stop a lot. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I would uh, think that that would help. Um, that Zen mode you're talking about, I can't, I have a hard time, I can't really get into it if I'm on stream. And that's partially because I'm talking. If, I'm, if I can, if you guys let me just, if you wanna see me go into Zen mode and see what happens when I paint and I just paint as fast as I normally do when I'm not streaming, let me know, because I would like to try it sometime and see what happens, because I'm rarely able to do that, because I kind of have to be talking. I feel like I have to be talking nonstop on stream to keep people's attention. But the thing is, that also completely, also, it interferes with my, with my, with my zen, right? But yeah, I would like to do that sometime. Sometime. Um, give me some emotes if you'd be interested in seeing me. Just take a minute and not talk for like, let's say just five minutes. And let's see how far I can get up this tail. And see if anything different happens than when I normally am painting and talking. Because I'll guarantee you I will get stuff done fast. And it'll look, I hopefully, maybe even better than if I was talking. Katie says, yeah, I can, I can understand that. You're trying to focus both on painting and entertaining stream. Exactly. Yeah, you want to see some emotes? Okay, that's enough people. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I kind of wanted to do it anyway, so let's just see. I'm going to set my alarm. I don't have my alarm, so I'm just going to... What time is it now? It's 4.39, so we're going to do till 4.49. No, not that, not that long. Just five minutes, just five minutes, half that time. Okay. You get to see me. Oh, and see, now I gotta say something. Aw, Hellstorm Gaming, thank you so much for that raid. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> We're just doing a quick little part of the stream where I'm gonna try to paint as fast, or not as fast as I can, but basically as much as I can without talking just to see if there's a difference in what happens with, with how much I can get done on this, on this dragon's tail. So, fair warning, this is not how the stream usually goes. We don't usually do this, but I wanted to give it a chance. See what happens. How fast, that is too purple right there. Okay, I'm gonna push that into the crevice. guarantee you this won't this won't take too long I don't want to bore you but I do I do want to see what happens how much can I get painted in a short time
This is good. Getting a lot done. Short time. I love that purple. I just love it. This is a good music to do this to, too. There needs to be a little pink over here. Yes. I just, I'm, this whole area just cha transformed. It looks so much better now. It feels like belly scales, doesn't it? And that's what it's supposed to feel like. Put a little bit more pink. Some of that. Okay. Give me a second here. So that, that wasn't a full five minutes, I don't think. Well, that was good enough. Yoshi and Zen, Zen painting mode. Please enjoy the speed painting portion of the stream for another. Four. Oh, you're so cute. Katie Lynch. Oh my gosh. Katie Lynch. Hold on one second. I got to do this. One second. Let me see if I can do this on my stream. <laughs> that made me very happy. So, let me fix this, hold on. Um, creator camp streaming tools, there we go, is that it? Nope. There we go. Community roles manager. Add new. Search. Hold on a second. Katie, I'm doing something for you. Hold on. You are now moderator. There you go. Thank you and welcome to the group. <laughs> Got the little sword. And don't worry ever about, it's like you can't make it to, I mean, I don't have to have my moderators at every single stream. It's not like a thing, it's just kind of a way for me to help people who are helpful and for the people who come here a lot. I would have made you a VIP if you weren't more frequent, but you're frequent enough on stream. I was like, eh, might as well make it a mod, you know? All right, I'm loving this tail. Can you guys see all the nuances and the greens and the golds and the purples? I need some greens up in here too on his, on his leggy, leggy. Nobody's gonna be able to say this looks like a trophy, huh? He needs, and now he needs purples on some of his arm too. That looks good. This is some of the best true metallic gold I probably have ever painted. And I am proud. Okay, in here there needs to be dark because 
the, the scales kind of go into each other. So we're gonna just get some wash in there first. And notice that I'm not just flopping it, I'm pinpoint, pinpointing it. I'm gonna pull that all the way around, down the tail. Separate the belly scales from the tail scales. Tail scales. Okay, that looks cool. Do the side as well. Most of that's already good. Yes, but look at the different, now that they're, now that it's been separated, see how that actually feels like belly scales now? So that means that I've got a lot more to work, to work with up here. And we'll do some more. And then I need to put some other colors and greens and purples and stuff on this bits, these bits. bit of bright gold, a little bit of citrine. It's gonna look good. Oh, and I just noticed more up on this side. close to the rock. We give that 3D shadow look. Some purples on the rock itself. Okay. Let that dry a little bit. One of the things, because I'm so nearsighted, I can really see how it looks on different parts of it. You can see those color nuances in, in areas. Put those greens right here, that looks good. There's a lot less to look at now. I feel like the head is becoming more of the focus. Take a look at look at chat. A great example of there's no such thing as a single color item on a creature, etc. To add dimension and interest to take takes a lot more work than single coat and done. That's true. The more mods the merrier, exactly. Yes. Really love the rose gold. Is it pre-mixed color? It is pre-mixed color. This is the this is the rose gold. You can get it through scale 75. Hi, Jamie G, thank you. We're not done with them, we're, we're just kind of taking a minute. I think I wanna weather some of the rock with some green. I need I need a dirty green like Quellia, green shade or some kind of this camo shade, Athonian. Let's shake this good. You just primed that model, it was going to be, I was going to do red, is that not a good idea? I mean, Jamie G, it's your model. Do you want to do red? Why would you not want to do red? Uh, thank you, Walt. Yeah, it's a big model. Look at, this is my hand. This is the model. This is the model and this is my face. <laughs> All right, I'm being silly. <laughs> So let me put some of this green, it's like a dirty, dirty green into the, ooh, you know what? That just really made a big difference for the rock because the rock didn't have any green in it and it didn't look real. The 
with some, almost like some moss, moss covered credenza. I'm going, I'm finding these little stone crevice pieces, like little cracks. And I'm also just adding a little bit of that green. Look at how that pulls that other moss together. Add a little bit of this. Oh, ah, <laughs> I like that. It's so dark. Just that. I love it. I love GW washes. I really do. Only thing is that they need to not be in those stupid pots, which is why I decant them. I spill. This color is great. This is Athonian chemistry. Okay, I know I have Beal Tan Green. I have Coelia Green shade as well, but it's, I think that they're too green. I think this this is like a dirty, poopy green color. Katie Links. Wait, both are. Are, uh, cute. Yep. Both are cute. Have you ever tried inks? I have. Um, I didn't want inks dry shiny, where the washes and the, um, where is like that right there? The washes don't dry shiny. And that's why I'm, I'm, cause rock is not shiny, really. That's looking already that just adding that bits of dark and that grunge we can add a little bit more of brown in here in some of the spots I am in love Now, I don't know if you can see, but when I hold this, when I hold this up, there is a dark shadow of his leg. I'm gonna kind of paint that in. I need a little bit more purple for the shadow. This has a funny smell. Hold on a second. Ew. It has a silt at the bottom of it. I wonder if it got rotten in it somehow. Does anybody have any experience with rotten GW shades? Is it possible that they got rotten? Okay. One other thing you need to do when you're painting um, is get get your flock painted too. Like get on there and work it into the base so that it looks normal. I'm already loving that and that needs to dry. Let me see what chat says. You should go with what you envision to be. If that's red, that's great. Gold, great. Plaid, great. But then you're as nuts as me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Use your what do what you think you want to do. The reason why I did gold was because I let chat choose. <laughs> and you know, I think red would look really cool on this dragon. He's the emperor dragon, right? So you can you can really do what you want to do. Okay, the, having that 
bits of green in there. It doesn't look quite so. Before it looked a lot more like um, dry brushed, kind of hacky stone. It looked okay, but it didn't look didn't look as good as the rest of the model, in my opinion. A little brown down here. Okay, that's lovely. Now I'm gonna use some of the transparent and go in here in these little crevices with the brown and the purple transparent. Fill in these little cracks. And my green. That stinks. This green stinks bad. Hopefully it will, the smell will go away before the show or I can at least seal it or something. The last thing you want is your model smells funny. And then the, the judges are like, mm, there's something about that model I don't like, right? That is my favorite. I love it. I think I'm going to get even darker on the lower half of this so that keep your eye going up and up toward the dragon. Like I feel like I almost need an airbrush on the base of those rocks. Let me get some green in there. See, it's, we're pointing up all of the direction. It's going this way. Does it, can you guys see it? Here, let me hold it down this way. Can you see how these lines are pointing toward the face? And some of these highlights are kind of bing, 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 kind of pointing toward that. It looks okay. I think I need maybe a little bit of gold back here. Better, I think. All right, I'm gonna lay it down. I want you guys to look at it. Tell me what you think. <laughs> you like it? Okay. They're bringing. Who's who uses bing binging? Did the paint? Do paints go off? Blaze? I don't even know. You're off for today. Okay, bye, Pandateka. Bye bye. Beautiful. Yeah, he's he's really cool looking. I love that tail really made a difference, doesn't it? All right, let's flip in. Probably need a little bit more stuff, um, sh shading on the back here. Yeah. And some of these. In the darkness of the shading. See if I can lighten that up a little bit. Greens and yellows are your worst in your experience. Yeah, do they go bad? 
They do go bad. Oh, okay. Well, let's hope that I can still use a little bit of it. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. There's a shadow here. I feel like I need to emphasize right here by this rock. might need to go back in here as well. Yeah, that looks better. And then under these wings, once we get these wings in, we'll have to go back in again and shade things. This is not a Reaper Mini, Walt. Well, this is from Creature Caster. It's one of their earlier sculpts, like a really old one. And um, I think they still, I can't remember. Does anybody know if they still have it on their website? Um, and I love it. It's a really nice one. It's called the Emperor Dragon. Let's do a little purple on the inside of that arm. Or highlights. I like the belly scale. Hey, Ray says, I believe it's still up. The mountain dragon is gone. Oh, okay. I want to show you the difference. This is before and this is after. Which one looks a little bit more integrated and a little bit more natural? Probably that one, definitely. So. Aw, Giggly Geekette, hello. Holy cow, big, big crowd. Welcome everybody. We are painting a emperor dragon for our um, creature caster. This is, yeah, thank you so much for following Apola. And giggling you get just raided us, hello. So this is our creature caster entry for Resin Beast. And I've got some wings here I can show you. Infraclear, thank you for the follow, welcome. Amuna says, so if I gave you the option of painting one of the Elemental Busts or Coddles Baba Yaga Bust, which would you prefer? You're gonna have to send me pictures of both of them so I can compare. Post, not, how do I say that? Post Note Myra. Thank you so much, Post Note Myra, for the follow. Thank you. Let me get the other wing in here. Wing, wing, wing. But yeah, I need to compare them so I can see them. Raw. Raw. <laughs> Anyway, let me show you his face. There's his face. He's got a good face and he's got lots of gold. We're gonna get in here at some point. I'm gonna airbrush some more. Not today, but I need to airbrush closer to the body. I need to do the darker wings. He's got really bright gold wings right now. And his, the rest of his body is slowly getting darker and darker. But I'm trying to push the focus toward the face, which is working. Panzer Lagwagen, Lagwagen, Panzer Lagwagen. Hallo. You have Cotterell's Lost Souls bust. You're gonna have to show me all these busts, Lamunas. I wanna see them all so I can tell what's gonna be better. Oh, no, I'm dropping things. All right. So I, I really feel good about that part of the rock. I do think I'm gonna take some of this lighter color and just highlight, get a little bit more. So, cause I lost some, I'm gonna take these wings off. 
Lost Souls is beautiful. Ah, there. Let's do a few bright highlights on the edge of some of this. And try not to take away the focus. Make these highlights. I'm trying to make these highlights point toward the face. So if they don't point toward the face, I don't I don't want it. I like it. Thank you for the follow. We've got lots of new followers. Thank you so much. Gemini Fairy, thank you so much for the follow. Let's see if I missed anybody. In for clear, did I did I thank you? Thank you so much for following. You guys are great. Lamunas, are you going to Gen Con? You will accept it second, thank you. Aw, <laughs> that's good. It's it's never never bad to thank somebody twice. Right? See how these they it now look at it, it looks even more stone like. Uh oh, got too much. Oh no, no. So is anyone here gonna go to World Model Expo or Adepticon? I know Luminous is gonna be at Adepticon. So notice I made a tiny little uh, arrow kind of pointing, right? like it. Hello. Leogon, hello. You're going to Model World Expo? Me too. I just signed up to try um, taking the workshop from uh, Michal Pizarski. I think that's how you say his name in, in Polish. If you were to say it in English, it would be like Michael Pizarski. That I know is not how you say his name in Polish. So yeah, I'm going to Model World Expo. I'm excited. Oh, nice. You managed to get a yes. Well, so yes. Two friends who are from Canada already reserved a room. It was a long time ago when they got the room and they got a triple. So I'm sharing sharing a room with some Canadians. And so it would, I only pay a third of the cost, and it's a lot better. Plus, my Canadian friend is also gluten intolerant, just like me, and so we'll be able to share the same food. Yes. All right. Rock is looking rocky. Look at the difference before, just before. Now after. It's, I think it looks better. What do you think? This definitely has less less work on le, less work on it. Hello, a pep. Thank you so much. It's been a while. How are you? It's, I'm so glad to have you come by. Palos, are you Palos? Are you going to be at, at Adepticon? Here we go. Looks amazing. Thank you so much. Looks before it looks very flat. I agree. It does look very flat. And then I added a bunch of browns and greens and it it also looks more like natural rock whereas this looks like fake dry brushed plain rock. <laughs> no, you oh you have the con the weekend before here in Ohio. Okay, no problem. 
Some people are also going to GaryCon, which is the same exact weekend. What is this? Something squishy right here. Oh, I guess it's just... Hold on, let me cover that. There we go. All right, we're going to get in here. Where's my green? My stinky green. There we go. Just get in there. Cover that moss. Make that stone look dirty. I need some brown. Get some brown. All that and see that? All that push that back. Pushing it back means covering it with color. Push that back. Get some green. Oh, so stinky right now, guys. And then I'm going to take some of my little purple and I'm going to go in here and get some of these crevices picked out. Already looking better, huh? Brown. Better, better, better. And one of the things I did, I, I, I covered the bottom of this with some Gucci. Get that in there. And some brown. Probably could airbrush that, but we'll wash it. It'll be okay. How are you, Bolos? Doing good, I hope. So there we go. Oh my gosh. I love it. It looks uh, looks different than this side now. What did I do? I added more greens. More of the stinky, stinky greens. Deep green here. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Smells so bad. My paint went bad. Do a little dark up in there. Now it's feeling better. Now it's looking more like that side. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a second. We're gonna be over time, I think. What time is it? Is it 5.15? No, we got time, we got 15 minutes. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. We tried to move some work trips to match up, but sadly head to Chicago tomorrow and then the first week in April. Ah, okay. Workshop should be awesome. Um, the other workshop that I signed up for at Model World Expo was from Penny Meyer, and it's about um, painting flats with underpainting. And so I'm work I'm going to be working on a flat, which will be really cool because I I have some flats of my own I want to get worked on. What color is it? That the one that went bad? It's this Ethonian camo shade. It it smells awful. Hold on, let me. Take the top off and smell it again. Make sure that's the one that stinks. Oh, yeah, it's not good. It's it smells like poop. I know. <laughs> not good. Does it smell bad as raw? Yeah, I think so. It does. I remember that. I need to airbrush some of the rock at the bottom. I'm going to use my hair dryer real quick. I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to You sent me links for the bus. Awesome. I'll definitely look at those. All right. Give me a second. I'm going to mute while I hair dry the dragon. I don't want to have you have this in your ear. Did you just hear me say you were taking a class from Penny Meyer? Yes. Have you, have, do you know of her? You know where she's from? I'm taking it at what Model World Expo. She's teaching about flats. Probably should not shake it with the cap off. That's true. That is true. I got the cap on now. <laughs> All right, I'm muting. 
I would like to take Alexandra's uh, from Craft World Studios, but not my style. You, yeah, it's not my style either. And I uh, just don't have the money to take something from everyone, and I wanted to take Penny's class. So I went ahead and, and opted for two. Sometimes if you take too many classes at, at these places, you end up with your brain, and you don't learn anything from any of them. So, all right, give me one second. I'm going to mute, and then I'm going to hair dry, and then we're going to talk some more. Okay, we're back and let's take a look at it. And it looks like it dried pretty nice. A little bit wet still in the deepest crevices, but I'm happy. Now we can go and do some edge highlighting. And I've just got kind of an off-white ivory color. Winterborne is entering her happy food coma place. Salmon sushi over oh, this sounds so good. I need some salmon sushi. So I'm just adding some arrows basically to point back up to the face, right? Because that's where we want everyone's eye to look. So if I highlight parts of the rock that point toward it, that's my goal is that we get Baby, baby sick. The Beal Tan, and I think the Athonian Camo Shade must have the same similar ingredients as Beal Tan because it, it does kind of smell like that. All right, so I'm taking my brush down the side of the rock just to pick up pick up some highlights and make it look even more stony than it did on that side. Like as if there's maybe some sunlight hitting because we've got a sunlight spot here. We finished a bike, almost finished a whippet tank and started a tractor. Oh, that's so cool. I want to see that. So for those of you guys who have not followed me before, we've got a bunch of new followers. We have a thing on Fridays that we call Whip Trip Fridays. And that means like anybody can post something they're working on and we'll show off and get critique and criticism if you want it or just, just show off to your friends, the other people on the stream so that people can see what you're working on and get ideas and inspiration. And so we'll be doing that on Friday. Wednesday, we're gonna be doing an auction so I'm gonna I'm gonna put up this the links to this on my social media. So make sure you're following me up here at all these all these social medias. I'm found Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What's I N? Is that Instagram? These are both Instagram. That's so funny. <laughs> this one is YouTube and that one's Twitch. Yeah, you know it's funny. I, they're both Instagram or maybe this is LinkedIn, which I'm not on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm not on LinkedIn. <laughs> my my designer must have just been like, Bleh. "Hi, Manny Baines, how are you?" Look at what we got going on. Look at this dragon. This teeth. Look at this tongue. <laughs> Good morning. Are, 
if you if it's morning, you must be in Australia or on the other hemisphere. MySpace? No. I'm not I think it's I think it's LinkedIn, but I'm not on LinkedIn. Anyway, follow at Shoshi's Minis. I'm a Shoshi's Minis on all of those things. And um, I'm going to post today the, the, the auction. It's a blind auction. I'm going to show once again the models we're going to put up for auction. Okay? You're going to want to get in on this because this is a really cool auction. So check this out. These are models that a friend of mine sent me that are from Big Child because he was helping them with the Kickstarter and he didn't have any use for them after he helped with them and he wasn't gonna paint them himself. So he's like, do you want these? Otherwise they're gonna go in the bin. And I was like, uh, yes. And so I'm auctioning these off. They're from Big Child and currently Big Child is doing a contest. So I thought this would be a really good time to get a lot of models out to you people. We could all maybe do the contest together. Maybe we should let chat decide which bus to paint. Ooh. Uh, no. Mm. Maybe if I... If there's one I really like, I'm going to pick one. If, if, I, if I could pick... If I can't decide, I'll let chat pick. How's that? Probably easier to make a link <laughs> LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Do you think I should make a LinkedIn for Shoshi's Minis? That would be so funny. I might as well, right? You're right, I should. <laughs> anyway, this is one of them. There's a whole bunch. And two of them I'm keeping because I'm gonna paint one of them also. This is another one. They're all built. They're already built. And like I said, Big Child is having a contest. So this is a really good time to get a hold of one of these models and I thought we could all paint them and enter the contest. Uh-oh, part of his spear fell off. I'll have to glue that back on. Okay. Cool. I just can hear upstairs, Mike, look at this one. This one's huge. Hold on, let me hold it better. There he goes. These are all orc pirates. Look at his nose. And each one of them is going to come bundled with either a, like a little monkey or a little goblin. And so because we have a whole bunch of goblins and bits and stuff. Like I'm telling you, he was helping with the Kickstarter. I'm not even joking. It, it is a troublesome spear tip. Yeah, I got the overlay, so why not? <laughs> So, and here's one more. This one doesn't have an arm. That's the only one. He's got a cool mop weapon on his back. Anyway, that's the only one that doesn't have an arm, and I figured maybe somebody could sculpt something. Oh, I had a little, there's like a little tiki, tiki thing there. There's some base, some like sandy beach bases, and like I said, I'm gonna bundle these together. I'm gonna take pictures, I'm gonna post these tonight on my auction page and then uh, I'll post it online so you guys can all give it a try and the way the the way the auction works is you you bid whatever you feel like you can afford or you think it, that model is worth it to you the highest bid gets the model and I um, send it to you I, I'll calculate shipping it in the US shipping is only ten dollars if you don't live in the U.S., I'll message you and find out your info if you're a winner. And then we'll calculate shipping from there. And if you don't want to pay the shipping, I'll just give it to the next bidder so that everything is fair and everything is cool with everybody. This works really well. We found out that this is a really nice way for people to get some models painted and unpainted on my channel. So it is that time. It is about that time. Can I shoot you a message when I post it? Um, Yes, I can do that. Um, whisper me, whisper me now so that I don't forget or, or send me a message so I don't forget and then I'll make sure to send it to you. So let's go, let's see if we can find somebody awesome to host. Ba -ba. Okay, look for somebody to raid who is on Twitch right now. 
You guys are, you, this has been a really fun stream, really good stream. I'm gonna switch over to our end time music. <laughs> Stick with me while we go ahead and raid. Okay, here we go. Let's look. Who is available right now? <laughs> I will be back on Wednesday, 2.30 to 5.30, GMT minus 6. And let's see who is right now online. That me? Ah! Go with your friends. Remaining. Go with your pain. And this is how you I don't know why you not letting me raid. Oh, we've got to raid. Got to run an ad break. I'm sorry, guys. The Twitch is making me run an ad break. 37 seconds remaining. All right, if you're watching the ad break, stick with me. We're gonna we're gonna raid into somebody, and as soon as we get a chance, we're gonna um, we're gonna find somebody great to raid. There we go. Here's a. Let's go ahead and raid. Rewind time. There we go. Go ahead and punch that raid button. I think I accidentally put an ad break in myself, so I apologize. If you're watching an ad break right now, go ahead and punch that. If you're ready to raid. All right, guys, take care. We're going to go raid Keyline Prime, and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye.